Welcome to the most underrated defense in NCAA 14. What formation is it, you ask? It's a dollar three two six formation. Now, uh, this is the closest thing in Madden that we'll ever be able to get in um, a, in a sub type of format. And the reason that is is because for some reason Madden doesn't put in four two five and sub packages uh, like we hope they do. And I think the most uh, beneficial one to run is the dollar three two six that we can. Um, that will be able to go to Madden NFL 25 ultimately. So that's kind of the, the key here. So we're kind of still preparing for Madden 25, and that's why I want to run it like this. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Let's get into it. So your uh, basic plays are these NCAA Blitzes. NCAA Blitz 3, 2, and NCAA Blitz uh, cover, cover 1 Man Blitz. Now, all of these Blitzes work exactly the same. You're going to run them the same. All you need to know is that... Um, where, uh, where they're set as your audibles so that you guys can access them for easy access during the game. Your next audible is your max coverage defense. This is going to be the cover six. This is by far one of the best max cover coverages defenses, and we're going to show you exactly how to use it to lock up all passing that your opponent could do. And then your X Factor play from this playbook is going to be the cross three fire. It's going to be a phenomenal play on third and short, fourth and short with the mo with the cross fire blitz, and we're going to show you how to use it and make you one of the best defensive players that can run the dollar three two six. And in my opinion, one of the most underrated formations in the game. Everybody's talking about the four two five and the three three five this season, but nobody's talking about the greatness and easy, easy to use uh, ability of the dollar three two six. So let's hop into game here and let's show you how these plays work. Alright guys, so in game here, dollar three two six and the base play that we're gonna be using from this is the cover four. And the cover four is unique because it has four deep and purple zones. And basically what we're gonna run from this is a max coverage type of deal. So the main setup, and this is you're going to do this on every play, you're gonna base a line and you're going to um, press coverage. You're then going to move these DBs off five yards. That is a crucial aspect of this defense. Make sure they're moved off just a little bit. Makes everything look the same. And then the only other two steps you have to do is you're going to shift your defensive line to the left and you're going to shift your linebackers to the left. This is going to create this look right here. Basically you got, you know, you see this, you got your slot DBs. Everything is lined up pretty, pretty balanced here. Um, the main weakness is going to be the right side. So if you wanted to, if you have time, you may roll it into something like this. You know, this is always good and always an even better look. But you don't have to do that every play. Just do what I said earlier. Now for the cover four setup, you're going to crash your defensive line to the right. You're going to re-blitz your defensive end on the left. You're going to quarterback spy your defensive tackle here. And you're going to user control your middle linebacker. Now to snap the ball, you're going to see you're going to flow right into this area of the field, and you're going to have really good coverage. It's going to be a cover four shell. They're going to have to take the underneath drag, the underneath crossing patterns. They're not going to get a whole lot of big. If they're trying to throw four verticals, this play will lock it up. So that's number one setup of cover four. Number two setup of cover four is blitz pressure. So if we want to bring pressure, we're going to set up the same pre-snap look. Uh, baseline press, move our corners off just a tad, shift our line to the left, and shift our linebackers to the left. Now you see this unique look we have now. What I like to do is I like to crash my defensive line to the left when I want to bring pressure off the left. I'm then going to re-blitz my defensive end on the left, and I'm also going to re-blitz my uh, linebacker on the left. Now the only other step you need to do is you're going to quarterback contain your slot defensive back. Now, for improved coverage, if you guys want, you can place that safety in a purple zone, and you can shade your coverage to the right. This is going to create a cover three look, but you remember, you are using the middle of the field. At the snap of the ball, you're going to see you're going to get A-gap pressure and edge pressure. And that's why this formation, in my opinion, is pound for pound uh, one of the best formations in the game. So I'll show it to you again. Same setup press and move them off just a smidge about five yards shade your coverage to the right user control the middle linebacker snap the ball that time the a get got picked up but you see the edge looped around and came in for uh, uh, a got a got a hand up 
a hand on the quarterback. Now, what do you say to wanting to bring pressure to the right side of the screen? If you want to bring pressure from the right side, but you want to, you still want to, you want to keep the pr same pre-snap look, but still be in the cover four. Well, all you're going to do is the same pre-snap look. You're still going to crush your defensive line to the left. That's always going to happen um, out of the cover four. And all you're going to do now is you're going to quarterback contain the defensive end on the right, or excuse me, the defensive end on the left. Slide down this DB and re-blitz him. And you're going to take your middle linebacker, you're going to put him on a quarterback contain. And you see pressure comes off the right edge. That time we actually got slid over for some reason, but the contain came in on the backside. So, uh, you're probably wondering, you know, why are we doing so many setups for the cover four? Why are we doing, why are we not doing it from all these other plays? Well, this is, this is not unique to this cover four play. This is certainly, you can use it out of every play in this formation. It's by far uh, one of the best things about this formation is a lot of it can be ran out of the same play. And you saw that the right side pressure was not definitely not as good as the left side pressure. But we're going to show you guys... Uh, uh, a couple plays later on in the video that are going to help you out in that aspect. So, moving on from the cover four, uh, what's, what happens if you want to mix in some man? Well, I like to call this cover two men under, so it's a quick audible up to the man play. And you see this two men under, it has, uh, this is what it looks like pre-snap. Now, but remember our setup, we're going to base align it, we're going to press coverage. We're then going to uh, adjust our defensive line, we're going to shift them to the left, we're going to shift our linebackers to the left, okay? And then all we're going to do uh, as far as remaining to set up the play is we're going to move these corners back five yards like we always do. And then what I like to do is I like to just reload this defensive end. I, sometimes um, you can run a max coverage version of this, but this is a pretty good uh, pressure for only sending four. They get up pretty quick. Uh, you don't get anyone clean, but it is a, a decent pressure that you can use and you don't have to do any hot routes except for just re-blitzing the defensive end. But uh, the main setup that I run from this is I will take the defensive end and re-blitz him. I will put my defensive uh, linebacker here, Blakes, in a purple zone. I'll put my defensive tackle in a quarterback spy. And I'll user my little linebacker. And I normally will flow in a purple zone area, kind of like right in here. To kind of take away the quick middle... If they are throwing slants, uh, I jump a slant. I don't know which one I would jump, but you know I just kind of pick it based off of tendencies. Okay, so that covers the two men under. Same exact setup if we wanted to bring pressure from left and right. Okay, what about cover three? Well, we do have a quick audible cover three, and that's another shell we have in behind it, which means I've now shown you guys cover four shell, cover two uh, man under shell. Now we're going to show you cover three shell. We're going to make it look the same. So once again, press coverage, but we're going to move them off about five yards. Okay. And then the same exact setup right here. This. And now we have flat protection, three deep, five under, and uh, pretty good pressure. Uh, it's pretty good. Block shot pressure, in my opinion, is really good this year. A lot of people underestimate it, especially if you got a guy like a Javadian Clowney or someone from South Carolina. This is actually, uh, I don't even know what these guys' names are. This is not South Carolina. Because you see that's not clowny and that's not clowny and that's not clowny. So, obviously, I'm not using them right now, but uh, just random team. So, anyway, anyways, moving on to the next play. Uh, that was the cover three. We covered cover three, cover four. Now it's time to cover two, um, to do a cover two play that's not man. So, this is our man, um, excuse me, our zone counterpart to our cover two man under. This is the cover two sink. This is by far one of the best zones in the game. And all we have to do to set this up is we're going to shift them, do the same exact thing. Everything is the same. We're just going to re-blitz Edmund here. Now this is what I like to do. I like to take the, the middle linebacker and put him in a deep blue zone. Now this is unique to this play and this play only. And, uh, but I, deal, I still will use the middle linebacker. But you take the, this guy right here, Johnson, and put him in a hook zone. And you take Blakes and put him in a quarterback spy. So that is the one difference with the coverage sink that is not the same with everything else and so now you see we can flow and then eventually if we want we can just drop off and you see now we have cover three uh... we have a cover three deep shell with five underneath 
and it's still the same coverage, but initial outside corner coverage is what the change is. Makes it a little better, makes it a little, you know, better overall. And then also, if we wanted to make a quick adjustment, what we could do with this is we could um, send pressure off, off the left here, like this, containing lane. And we remember we like to use her the 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 middle uh, linebacker. So what I would do is I would purple this side, not slide him in just a smidge, and I would flat the back side. So now you see you get a look like this. You're using the middle linebacker. Blitz comes in off the left, and you're kind of covering and, and hovering that region of the field. That's not one of my main plays, but sometimes I do run it based off tendencies of my opponent. Now it's covered the blitz audible down, and this is spinner. This is one of my favorite blitzes in the game. All you got to do is shift your line to the left, same pre-snap look. Everything is, looks the same pre-snap. And guys, it only will take you one to two seconds to do this once you guys get it down. So now you see we have this look. This is the pre-snap look that we're given at the play call. So what I like to do here is I like to move Johnson way out. This is kind of a tell that I'm running spinner, but I'm willing to do this. I'm going to crash my line to the left like I always do. Reblitz that guy here. This middle linebacker uh, is going to get the two guys should come free off the left side of the field. One guy should come free off the right. Let's see if it works. Right, you see they got caught up. But you see, this is a heavy pressure blitz. I only run this blitz when I want to, if my opponent's blocking a half, I got a tight end. That's the only time I will run that blitz. But it is one of the best blitzes of the game. You get three guys free at the quarterback. Okay, so now it's time to start getting into our zone blitzing schemes. Once we've kind of established good coverage defense, a basic principle foundation, we need to start using zone blitzes to get in our opponent's head. On first down, that's a very good time to take advantage of your opponent maybe getting lazy or trying to use West Coast passing principles. So I like to use the play NCAA Blitz 2, and all you have to do to set these plays up is you just shift your line. It's the same exact setup. All that matters now is the base, uh, is the setup of the play. You don't have to re-blitz or hot route anyone. You just have to shift your line to the left, shift your linebackers to the left, and you're going to see the pressure is going to come right off the right edge. You see that? That's a great counterpart to what we've been doing. Also, look at what happens, guys. You have you know, you know have these, these cover two flat zones. Now, we're normally using this guy, so what you can do is this. Watch. This is a fake blitzing concept. He's going to come in, and then you just get out of the way. And see, so you can come off once they act, once he occupies the defensive guard or the offensive guard, then you can you gotta peel off and, and and cover some ground. Now, with the way user control is, some of you guys may not want to user uh, somebody this year, so that's perfectly fine. Just click onto him, act like you're gonna user him, and just blitz with him. And you see the pressure comes in. Something glitchy happened there. Um, sometimes what happens with these um, plays in practice mode is somebody moves just a smidge and it could mess the whole blitz up so make sure you are following every single step uh, in these blitzes and there here it is again and that time it comes in nice and clean for us so these blitzes are very effective this blitz comes in off the off the right edge now what if they're blocking the halfback and I know they are all I'm gonna all I have to do if they up my opponents blocking a halfback is I set everything up the same the only adjustment I make is I re-blitz the left outside linebacker. That's it. And you're going to see it to snap the ball. You're going to see we come in off the right edge. Actually, uh, you guys should probably do this one step. It is a little bit, you know, it is an extra step to this blitz. But it makes this blitz that much more deadly. Move lane down a bit like this and re-blitz your uh, linebacker on the left. And then re-blitz that defensive end to get a cleaner blitz angle going on there. And now you see we come clean. But uh, some, it, it, it's not all the time. It's a little bit of a difference. And I just noticed it just now because, like, when I was running earlier, it was working just fine. But right now I just noted a, uh, noticed a quick difference. So just make that adjustment, guys. Re-blitz that guy. Make that blitz angle cleaner. And now you're going to have six guys coming, but you're getting two guys free at the quarterback. So uh, there you go. And the same thing. Now say, uh, okay, so say you get him. Say you sack the quarterback. It's going to be a second and 15. This is why I like to go to either one of my max coverage defenses, uh, the cover six. Now, the cover six here, all we do from this is we're going to shift our line to the left, shift our linebackers to the left, shift our, um, our baseline press, and move them off five yards. 
What I like to do here is I like to slide lane in just a little bit to act like I'm blitzing. I'm going to quarterback spy Johnson. I'm going to re-blitz Edmund. And I'm going to re-hook uh, Blakes. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use user my middle linebacker. Watching out for the deep post routes, the deep streaks, something like that. Everything else is going to be covered, bottled up. This is a great coverage defense. You're just going to cover the middle of the field with your middle linebacker. And then you're going to let the block shed uh, do the rest for you. So you see that's how the cover six works. And now we're going to show you guys real quick a uh, situation where, say you stop him, and it's going to be about third and, and uh, 12, third and 11. This is where I like to use the NCAA Blitz 3. And the NCAA Blitz 3 is the same, works the same exact way that the NCAA Blitz 2 works. It's a little more effective, in my opinion. And you have three deep, so you, you're going to cover those, those deep streaks. Though if they're trying to you know beat your cover two defense, now you throw this at them. Four verticals will no longer beat it. And um, here we go, sending the same exact setup as NCAA Blitz two that I showed you earlier. You know, bam, a guy comes free. Say, and if it's a third and six or something like that, this is where I normally will send um, six guys at the quarterback. And the reason for that is because I want to make sure that the pressure is applied. And then again, just back them up a little bit after you press them. And you're going to see this is one of the better coverages for long yard situations. And you get two guys free at the quarterback. Okay, so that does it for those couple plays. And then say uh, it's like a fourth and eight, fourth and nine. Not quite time for our X-Factor play. But I don't want to throw the same play at my opponent twice in a row. I'm going to audible to this NCAA Blitz man play. The same exact pre-snap look. But this time I normally what I do it's I only send one guy. I don't want to send. I only send five. I don't send six in this situation. But if you see here, the linebacker on the left of the side of the screen is on the running back on the right. That's a mismatch. So what I like to do is I like to get on my uh, linebacker here on the left, and I like to put him in a deep blue zone. And I like to user this safety come down in the box and work out of the, that running back and just kind of follow the running back, spy him. And if he's blocking, then I uh, actually, if he blocks, then I'm going to try to go cover somebody else. But obviously, if you wanted to, real quick, I just want to show, if you if you wanted to bring pressure off both sides, it's certainly, uh, it's the same exact way we do it from the other NCAA Blitz plays. Nothing changes. And the last play I wanted to talk about today is the cross three fire. Basically, you're going to do this. Again, same exact set of pre-snap that you have been doing throughout this guide. Okay, move them off just a smidge like this, like this. Now, look at what we have here. We have the middle linebacker blitzing straight down. We're going to snap the ball. We're going to show you what happens. So, you see, they loop in. You see that? They loop in. But is the middle linebacker important? Let's find out. Let's see, what, let's see if we can do it without him because I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, I wanted to put him in a quarterback purple zone or something like that um, to flow coverage it. Let's see if it works the same. Yep, loop works. Loop still works the same. It works the same. Uh, the loops don't always come in free, but they do always come in eventually. And uh, so real quick, let's show it to you one more time. All the adjustments you're going to make on this play is you're going to put Johnson in a purple zone and make sure it's going to the right, or excuse me, to the left side of the screen. And you're going to get over here with Johnson, snap the ball, just let the computer take him over there. And you see that beautiful cloud coverage. It's flow coverage, guys. It's going to pick the slants. If they throw a slant to the left side of the field, it's going to get intercepted by Johnson flowing out there in that purple zone. This is a concept from Cowan County last season. Uh, he would put his he would put a slant, uh, per, uh, curl a flat zone on the opposite side of the field and use it and flow coverage his way into that. And then you see times like this, you get that far up the field, quick set, quick pressure. That's the beauty and the beat of the 326 defense, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoy this or would like to check out more NCAA 14 tutorials, be sure to click on my channel uh, page down below to go to the channel, check out the other videos, and also subscribe so you can be notified of more videos later to come. Thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate all the support you guys have shown me through this time uh, of mission work in Canada. I actually just got back the other day. Um, Friday, and this is probably going to go by up on Saturday, so once again appreciate all the things you guys have done for me all the blessings that you guys have given me and I just wanted to, to say God bless you guys, thank you, hope you guys enjoy this defense, 
Uh, this is one of my favorite defenses to run this season. By far, it's very effective. A lot of people underestimate it. I hope it helps you guys. I hope it works for you. If it doesn't work for you or you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Last thing, guys, follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.